Gamers can rejoice because Nvidia has finally announced their new generation of consumer graphics cards, no longer being called GTX, but rather RTX. We can talk about why that is, and this announcement was made during their press conference at Gamescom. So lots of interesting stuff to go over, let's jump in. Now they actually announced three different graphics cards, namely the 2070, so it's no longer 1080 series, it's now starting with the 2, so the 2070 the 2080 and the 2080 Ti, which is particularly interesting because usually they release the main one, like the 1080 or whatever, and then a few months down the line, they'll release like the 2080 Ti, but this time they did it all at once, which we can kind of speculate a little bit on later. But you might be thinking, well, what's the deal with this new RTX thing? Why isn't it called GTX anymore? That's what it's been called forever. And the whole idea is they basically made a huge push for ray tracing, and that was really what they focused on pretty much the entire press conference was how much better these RTX cards are at ray tracing, so much so that they renamed the whole line to basically focus on that ability. So the RTX basically stands for Ray Tracing X or whatever. And by the way, the new architecture that this is using is called Turing. If you're not really familiar with what Ray Tracing is, it has to do with lighting. So up until now, graphics cards, they talked about how they pretty much exclusively used rasterization, which is basically rendering the image as a 2D image and then kind of basing the light off that. Whereas that would not be good for things like mirrors where you could only render things directly in the scene. Whereas if you wanted to render something around a corner reflected off the mirror, well, that's not visibly directly in sight of the camera. So it would be impossible. With ray tracing, what happens is the GPU will actually create a ray and kind of bounce it around the scene to create an image in 3D, an actual physical model, instead of just a projection, so you can actually get much, much more accurate rendered scenes, and you can do things like a mirror, because the ray will bounce around corners and be able to render 3D things in a 3D environment and actually see reflections instead of just one flat thing. This might not seem like a big deal, but it actually really is in my opinion. And they tried to kind of convey that during the press conference. And it basically just makes things look so much more realistic when they're being rendered. I mean, one of the biggest things you can tell is when a 3D scene is just has bad light. That's like the biggest giveaway of when something is 3D rendered versus like a photograph. If you can get ray tracing light, it literally does the physical calculations for how light will behave in real life so things will reflect better and look real. The problem is, of course, that is extremely GPU and processor intensive but with this new Turing architecture, they really optimized it so in consumer GPUs even, it's way more efficient and it can actually be done in real time. And I'll be showing you some of these demos they showed during the press conference and it really is a huge difference. They even showed some gameplay from like Battlefield 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and you can see in some of these, you can actually see reflections that look realistic and it's almost to the point where if you didn't know that's why it looks different, you'd think, wow, this looks way more realistic and not maybe perceive why that is, but now that you know, it's really obvious. So you might get the point already, we can kind of move on. And another feature that these GPUs have are so-called tensor cores, which are going to be using deep learning. We know that deep learning, machine learning, AI has been a huge buzzword in the tech businesses all year and for the past few years, but it actually is pretty useful. And in this case, you might be thinking, well, how can graphic cards use AI? But really it's to be able to render images that are not necessarily in view. So it's kind of offloading a lot of the stuff that would normally be impossible with rasterization. We talked about rendering reflections. It can kind of better use deep learning to create images out of nothing that actually look reasonably realistic. It's a bit more complicated than that. That's the very basic version of it, but it's basically just be, being able to create more realistic images. And one of the ways it's actually doing that is using their so-called NVIDIA NGX, Neural Graphics Acceleration Project, 
which basically uses supercomputers at like Nvidia headquarters or whatever to basically do a whole bunch of like training on these supercomputers. And then all that is done ahead of time. So it kind of like preloads the graphics cards and tensor cores and the code to be able to do real time processing of images much more accurately because it pre trained it ahead of time on the supercomputers and took the best parts, the correct parts, and loaded it into the GPU. So it kind of like takes the uh, evolution of the uh, AI brain and kind of turns it into an instinct almost in the GPU at the end product. You can think of it that way. It's like a lot of times in humans, you know, we might be afraid of one thing like a spider. We not might not know why, but it's because of the millions of years of evolution that taught us spiders can hurt us sometimes if they're poisonous. So it's the same idea here. They trained it with supercomputers that are super expensive. Obviously a person is not gonna be able to buy that. And then they take the best parts of it, put it into the GPU so the final product makes much more realistic images without having to do the hundreds of millions of dollars of calculations. The one thing though that might stifle a few people is the price. Now during the press conference they announced it would be from $499 for the 2070 up to $999 for the 2080 Ti, but that's like the base level. When they actually released pre-orders for these graphics cards, they're the founder's edition and they're actually a little bit more expensive starting at uh, $599 up to $1,200 for the 2080 Ti. That is an insane price in my opinion. And I think a lot of people are not going to be willing to pay that much. I mean, previously it was what, like $699, $899 for top end cards. Now it's like several hundred dollars more. Obviously, NVIDIA is pretty much doing a price grab in my opinion. And they figure, you know what, if people are willing to pay that much, Let's gouge them for it. Of course, if these graphics cards are actually able to perform as well as Nvidia is claiming during this press conference, then it might actually be worth it because they're claiming that it's like several times more powerful, but they're kind of using like a made up measurement, RTX operations. This is not flops, which is what usually is standard. And their justification for using this type of made up or new measurement is because they're saying that different parts of the GPU are much more efficient practically than old GPUs. So even though a GPU in this part for ray tracing might only have, let's say 10 flops, obviously this is a complete figure of speech. If it has 10 flops, it's so efficient with this new architecture that it can do what old graphics cards could only do with 100 flops. So they're saying, well, so we're gonna call this RTX ops and say, well, the total is the 10 conventional flops in rasterization and then 100 flops for the ray tracing and we'll add it together and that's like 110 flops. That's kind of what they're doing and in a way that makes sense, but it also kind of implies that, well, that means that the old graphics card is like 10 times worse. The new one's 10 times better, but really it's only 10 times better in like that one specific area, which might not be used all the time or maybe few times at all. So I don't think it's gonna be as much better and this amazing jump in general as they're saying. That being said though, I will say that this new ray tracing and RTX thing does look amazing. It does make 3D renderings look super realistic. The problem is that not a lot of games support it. They only talked about three new games that support it. Those are gonna be Battlefield 5, the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and the new Metro game. And the problem is, yeah, these games will support it, but none of your old games are gonna support it unless the developers put out like a massive patch to integrate this. And any games going forward don't necessarily have to add this RTX feature. And especially games that are already in development, the developers might say it's not even worth it if we're pretty much already done. What's the point in adding all this new uh, work just to get this RTX thing working really well if people might not even notice the difference if it's something so new, no one's gonna even miss it. So going back to the question, is it worth it? I would actually say 
probably not right now. Not until maybe a year down the line when games actually start supporting it. It's going to kind of be like a PhysX thing. Remember PhysX where not every game will support it, but the games that do support it, it's awesome. Although I do think that this RTX and ray tracing and light is going to be much, much more noticeable improvement than something like PhysX. So basically what I'm saying is in games that will support it, it will be awesome. Truly amazing, I think. But that's only going to matter if you're playing those games. Now, if you're going to be like a professional or big time Battlefield 5 player, then yeah, it might very well be worth it to get an RTX card, especially if you're getting a new one. Or if you are building a new PC and you're trying to decide which one to get, I would definitely actually recommend getting RTX because that way you'll future proof it. I think it's probably not worth it to upgrade if you already have a decent graphics card that is doing everything you want it to do at the moment. And I do actually think that ray tracing is pretty much as big a deal as Nvidia is saying. It's just going to take a while before we can fully take advantage of it, but it will be pretty exciting, especially when other graphics card manufacturers like AMD can get on that. If they're able to even compete, then we can see these prices coming down a bit on NVIDIA. So I guess that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. Are you going to be getting a new RTX card or are you completely happy with what you have now? If you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you want to subscribe, I make a couple new videos every week, so it should be worth it. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.